And coffee. Cool. Oh, some mornings. Coffee just sounds so good, doesn't it? Some days, coffee sounds so good. <laughs> and you know, every day, emotionals sound good. Because it's a time to sit back. Sit back. It's a time to take some time to ask God what He wants. You know, hey Lord, what's happening? <laughs> or Father, would you help me this day to walk in your way and to learn of you and to taste and see that you are good? And a chance to understand that whether we feel up or down or all around the town, that God, as we think about him, as we consider him, as we meditate on his word, as we consider the book of the law and how we should meditate on it day and night when we rise up and when we sit down, when we walk on the way, when we talk, when we share, when it's in the back of our minds, then it influences everything that we do and it changes our perspective on people, places, and things. And so your devotional or your evotional, whichever it may be, is an important time for you to put your attitude and perspective back into place in alignment with God. And when you do, you'll find that things go a lot easier when you have a conversation with God, as He can instruct you in what to do so you avoid the pitfalls of life. And if they come, then you know that He sent them for your instruction and for your learning. that thou wouldst bless me indeed, that thou wouldst keep me from evil. And God granted him that which he requested. <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. And when he gives quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hides his face, who then can behold him? Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessings is upon thy people. How great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. I pray not that thou shouldst keep them out of the world, but thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks, receives, and he that seeks, finds, and to him that knocks, it shall be opened. The Lord redeemed the souls of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. You know, when I read these, you know, and I hear the scriptures, you know, it seems to be like there's always a design that God has for each of us. And it never seems to be one of destruction. It always seems to be one of instruction to take us from the direction which we're going to the place where he would have us to be so he can bless us, so he can encourage us, so he can teach us that life isn't about you know me or getting or having or owning but it's realizing that god is involved in every aspect of our life at least that's the way it appears to me how about you <laughs> may it be that I, you see what god directs you to see or hear what god has you to hear enter not into judgment with thy servant for in thy sight shall no man living be justified you know you think about that if you read it carefully it says don't judge or get into judgment with your servant because in your own sight no one that's alive will ever be justified pretty heavy thought there if you think about it for a minute and consider well what it says come now let us reason together saith the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
A man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. By the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. By him, all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's so many people that, okay, maybe not so many, there's some people that sometimes take an improper view of grace and how that works and make works become a mandatory aspect of proving that you have grace in your life or that God has given you unmerited favor and that somehow you need to do something and work out and work with your salvation when in reality if it's not a response of love to God if you're not doing something as far as works are concerned because God told you then really what it amounts to is just a sandcastle and I hate to say it but you could build cathedrals to the sky you know and God's just gonna say why you know he's not gonna look it down upon them and say oh wow look what you did oh you're so much better because everything was accomplished in Jesus it was all done and completed now that doesn't mean that we can't and we don't have a responsibility because Jesus said I am your Lord and if you follow me I will call you my friends and you will do as a friend would do when he loves that friend and when he cares for them and I think that's where people mistake the idea of grace it being so complete that they can somehow abuse grace and then not do anything or confuse works and do everything and somewhere in between God is looking at them and going uh, kids come on now let's you know get this right I paid for you all I took care of you I technically own you so now you call me Lord but why don't you do what I said and if I am your Lord then I will call you my friends if you're doing what I said but if you're not then you don't know me because you don't have an intimate recourse or discourse with me you're not in conversation so then when the Lord said that on that day he would say I never knew you and cast them into outer darkness what a tragedy so if there's something you're going to work at and you feel like you need to do then work at the development of your personal relationship with Jesus if there's something in the way move it out of the way if there's something stopping you go around it if there's something hindering you ask God about it you know but it's been taken care of there's no reason why you can't have communication with God that's been well if you're born again I mean all you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved ask and you shall receive knock and the door shall be open you know seek and you shall find and if you seek the Lord with all your heart soul and mind and strength God will meet you too and he'll he'll share with you what you need to do in order to be saved sometimes it's as simple as saying God save me or God help me or God deliver me or Jesus show me you know or Jesus I give you my life or Jesus come into my heart any number of things can work if God is the one doing the work because he is at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure either in you or about you and I would prefer that he be in you and accomplishing his will than about you and finding out what his will for you is it is for salvation but it might wind up to be something else